We always allow applause. <laughs> Good afternoon. We are grateful you joined us here in the sanctuary or by live stream for this day filled with joy and celebration as we ordain Christina. Please know that whoever you are and wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here at First Congregational United Church of Christ in Madison, Wisconsin. We will have the opportunity to celebrate communion later in the service. As you are released by an usher, please come down the center aisle to take communion by intention. Receive the bread, then dip in the cup. If you are sitting in one of the side sections or in the choir, Please exit down the side aisle and come down for communion in the center aisle. After receiving the elements, please exit by the side aisles to return to your seat. This will give everyone the opportunity to receive communion from Reverend Shane Witter. There will be light refreshments available in the back of the sanctuary after worship. We hope you will join us. A reminder to clergy, Please join us at the front of the sanctuary for a photo to share with the association and conference. And now, may our hearts be joined together in a worship service ordaining one of God's children called into ministry. Good afternoon. What a beautiful, beautiful day it is for so many reasons. It's beautiful outside and beautiful inside because we get to participate in this wonderful celebration. Now, if you are able, would you please stand and join me in the call to worship? We gather this afternoon to worship and celebrate the rite of ordination. We recognize God appeared to Moses while at the burning bush and exclaimed, I am sending you. Samuel announced, here I am. Isaiah heard a voice ask, whom shall I send? Jeremiah was only a boy, known by God before he was born. Jesus said, follow me. And the fishers abandoned their nets, and they followed. We give thanks and praise for God's 
still small voice, and for prophets, priests, and teachers in answering the call. Please let us join together and sing, I was there to hear your morning cry, hymn number 351. be seated. Would you join your hearts in prayer? Holy One, the shadows of death surround us, growing long over us, threatening to engulf us in the valley of death and despair. The pathway before us is dim and our eyes are weary from our search for sure footing. Should we catch even a glimpse of your illumined presence on the journey, our bodies, our souls, the depths of our very beings will cry out, wait for us, we will go with you. So now we pray, God of light, before whom all shadows fade into illumined brilliance, day to day pours forth speech and night to night declares knowledge, silent words, secret knowledge of you from those celestial keepers of light and shadow. You, Holy One, who sends light forth to all the corners of the earth, send a little light our way too, that we would need no light of lamp or sun, for you, O God, will be our light. Light a path now, we pray, a bright path for the one who is called forth from among your people this day, and a little light for the rest of us, too, who gather to kindle the warmth of loving companionship and solicitous solidarity around her. Even as the shadows seal us in, we pray that you would show yourself again to us today in the illumination of sacred text 
and the enlightened gathering of faithful community, that we may walk in the light as you are in the light. Amen. Please join me in reading Psalm 150. Alleluia! Praise God in God's holy temple. Praise God in the firmament of God's power. Praise God for their mighty acts. Praise God for God's excellent greatness. Praise God with the blast of the ram's horn. Praise God with lyre and harp. Praise God with timbrel and dance. Praise God with springs and pipe. Praise God with resounding cymbals. Praise God with loud clanging cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise God. Alleluia. In the verses preceding today's lesson, we find the growing accounts of appearances of the risen Jesus, first early in the morning in a garden with two of his closest friends and followers, later that night in a darkened upstairs room gathered out of fear. And then we pick up the story today. And as we read this gospel lesson from John's final chapter, I invite you to um, turn to the front of your bulletins and find the beautiful picture and place yourselves on this beach as you hear this story. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. And he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. They said to him, we'll go with you. They went out and got into the boat, and that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, No. He said to them, Cast the net to the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It's the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and jumped into the lake. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore full of large fish, a hundred and fifty-three of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Simon said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. A second time Jesus said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. 
Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. Jesus said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because Jesus had said to him the third time, do you love me? So he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and to go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fashion, fasten a belt around you and take you where do you do not wish to go. Jesus said to indicate the kind of death by which he, which he would glorify God. And this he said to him, follow me. Here in today's lesson, may it add a blessing to our hearts and our understanding. Thanks be to God. Amen. As we gather to reflect on God's word, will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing unto you, O God, our creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Amen. <clears throat> you may or may not know that I am a tech geek. Long ago, like long, long ago, I was an undergraduate at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, so yes, go Badgers. I pursued a degree in the communication arts with an emphasis in broadcasting and film. One semester, I interned at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, WHTV. Back then, technology looked like cutting, like cutting, and splicing together VHS and audio cassettes, if any of you know what those are. <laughs> Years later, I became a speech and language pathologist. Again, I was hooked on the many ways we use our voices, our facial expressions, body language, and yes, technology to communicate. We connect to others through lots of different modalities, and God does too. Christina, it is with joy that I share this message with you today and all of your friends and family and colleagues who are gathered here. It was a privilege to mentor you during your pastoral internship at Memorial UCC. I know you live and pray and text and teach like candles, breathe, and visit your beloved Door County because you understand and live this divine truth. God created us as multimodal creatures. We hear, we touch, we smell, taste, and see. In balance, taking a moment to Google human senses, you will find that temperature, heat and cold, proprioception or body awareness, and pain are additional ways through which we understand the world and the divine around us. And yet each and every one of us is unique in how these senses are or are not accessible to us. I obviously wear glasses since my sense of vision is impaired. I also have this disorder in which I experience pain, heat, and cold differently than most people. In the diversity of who we are and how we gather information, I have come to believe God is multimodal too. It is here on the beach at the dawn of a new day and here in the beginning of your ordained ministry that Jesus lights a fire for all of us. In our need to adapt beyond the pandemic, during an environmental crisis, with climate refugees migrating throughout the world, 
and wars erupting in the tensions. Jesus calls out, are you tired? Come sit. Is your to-do list anxiety provoking? Rest a while. Are you hungry? Eat, be nourished, connect. Take a moment before you get on with the busyness. A personal favorite phrase of mine right now is, be unbusy. Be unbusy. Renewal is what eating and drinking with Jesus is all about. <clears throat> As a good UCCer, in the rule of St. Benedict, <clears throat> meals are delightfully listed as a faith practice. If possible, meals should be taken together in the spirit of community and used as an opportunity to share our internal life. The expressions of our thoughts and feelings serve many purposes. Frequently, when we speak, we open ourselves to new insight. We do not know what others feel or think unless they share it through words. Language breaks down our separation. Responsibility for communication is to be shared so that each member, each member of the group, shall take an equal turn. That is why I enjoy your posts on Facebook. Your companion dog spirit sparks lots of joy. And your food posts nourish. Your house disasters are authentic. I know you like this season of fall, but your words several weeks ago were delicious on Facebook. And I quote you, summer loving, bring on the BLTs and watermelon, cucumber and feta salad with balsamic grays. Hashtag eat pretty food. Hashtag eat the rainbow. Hashtag BLT. And maybe all in one breath, hashtag watermelon cucumber feta. Hashtag summer lovin. Hashtag summer produce. And I am going to add hashtag eating and drinking with Jesus. Now, if someone here, any of you, don't, never quite understood the use of hashtags in social media, it's okay. Just know it's a way to connect with others on social media who have similar interests. Christina, you've been called by God to serve the church in extraordinary times. Early in 2021, when you first contacted me via phone, I was excited about the prospect of having a pastoral student. I also wondered what you hoped to experience when you mentioned learning how to lead a congregation as one of your goals. Because LOL, laugh out loud, living in this whatever the church is in these days, some call it a second reformation, others a post-Christian era. Do any of us know what the Spirit is creating? There is so much joy and compassion and grace, and there is much hunger sickness, violence, death, fear. This is happening in places far off and right down the street. This is why I deeply appreciate the scripture story you chose for today. It is a wonderful reminder that all of those who had physically gotten to know Jesus in Galilee and Jerusalem and beyond found themselves in a world suddenly turned upside down. Their rabbi, healer, prophet, great hope had been beaten, dragged through the streets, and killed. This all happened just a few days ago or has it already been a week or two? Have you noticed that in times of crisis, time blurs? 
The intimate supper with Jesus in the upper room of a crowded city seems so far off. Yet the moment, the connectedness that lingers in the disciples' minds remained. They broke bread together. They drank deeply of the common wine. Eating and drinking with Jesus is good. Then came the numbness, the betrayal in the garden, death. Now the very real fear was that they too might get arrested, killed. There was a what next? Emptiness pulsing through their hearts. They wanted to do, but they were not sure what they could do. In the disarray, they did what most of us tend to do. They turned back to normal, which meant they went fishing. It is part of our human DNA. It is so much easier to just turn off the TV, log off the computer, turn away from all of the catastrophe spewing around. We grab onto anything that we think is normal, how things were. Okay, church, does any of this resonate with what you are experiencing in your congregations today. In this space, know that we have an opportunity to see what resurrection can look like. Jesus sits down and motions to us and says, bring what you have. These are holy words of encouragement and hope. Bring what you have. That is all. That is enough. Christina, your pastoral leadership, your hashtags, the unexpected text you send got me through some rough times in my own pandemic ministry. Your authenticity and spirituality, which will be now a blessing for the good people at St. John's United Church of Christ, go forward. We at Memorial United Church of Christ have been, and the community in Moreau will be, nourished by your presence. Christina, you have been, and still are, a teacher extraordinaire. It is in this time that God nudges you to be a pastor of engagement. And I don't know about you guys, but I think engagement is desperately needed. Let's face it. Engagement is not what we humans tend to do when the world flips over. Even the disciples needed Jesus, the ultimate rabbi of engagement, to summon them in their time of grief to connect and nourish their bodies and souls. Smoked fish and bread Welcome to eating and drinking with Jesus. Beloved, as we prepare to gather around Jesus' table, be aware. Be aware of the presence of community, the sacredness of this physical space, which are, extends to those of you who are with us on video as we enter into covenant and support Christina in her ministry. We have work to do. Encourage her to take Sabbath. Sabbath. Encourage, comfort, and challenge her now and then in her faith journey. Check in on her regularly and ask, like, really, really, really ask how she is doing in person by email, a text, phone call, card. Then listen. Take a breath. And another.
breaking bread, receiving communion, here or wherever you are, is multimodal. It communicates God's promise, radical welcome, grace-filled interconnectedness, bold transformation. Much can be discovered in this simple meal. So come, bring what you have, experience what love has prepared for you. Amen. Oh.
Having been fed in word, prayer, and song, it is now time for us to offer our gifts to God. This afternoon's offering will be received for the Wisconsin Conference UCC Seminarian Fund, which provides resources and scholarships for those on the path toward ordination. Conference scholarships, along with financial aid from seminaries and the students' personal funds, provide crucial support to financing the theological education and preparation of persons who will serve in ministry. In any given year, there are between 30 and 40 members in discernment in our conference. Your gifts help not only the members in discernment, but also help all the places they will minister throughout the lives of their ministry. So I invite you to give generously. Through you, the Wisconsin Conference changes lives. Gifts can be given today by text or using the QR code found in your bulletin, or cash or checks can be left in the black boxes found on the walls near the exits. Today, we invite you into a reflective musical moment of our giving and the work that the Wisconsin Conference is doing within the greater United Church of Christ. Let us be in reflection as we listen. Let us join together in our prayer of dedication. Font of every blessing, receive these gifts with the joy in which we give them. 
Bless these gifts to your church universal. May they be used to fill in the gaps of what we cannot yet imagine. May we always take joy in being blessed to give and to share with you and each other. Amen. You may be seated. Grace to you and peace from God, who is and who was and who is to come, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness and the sovereign of the rulers on earth. The Southwest Association of the Wisconsin Conference of the United Church of Christ greets you in the name of Jesus Christ, the head of the church. To God, who by the power at work within us is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. First Congregational United Church of Christ, after carefully considering the call to ordained ministry of Christina Schoenvetter, respectfully requests that the Southwest Association ordain Christina to the ministry of the Church of Jesus Christ, consistent with Scripture and with the traditions of the Church Universal, and according to the faith and order of the United, United Church, Church of Christ. The Southwest Association has reviewed the request of First Congregational United Church of Christ. We have prayerfully examined Christina concerning her fitness for ministry in Christ's Church. We are pleased on behalf of the United Church of Christ to authorize the ordination of Christina into Christian ministry. Christina, servant of God, we invite you to come forward as a sign of your consent to receive ordination into Christian ministry. The United Church of Christ acknowledges as its sole head, Jesus Christ, Son of God and Savior. It acknowledges as kindred in Christ all who share in this confession. It looks to the word of God in scriptures and to the presence and power of the Holy Spirit to prosper its creative and redemptive work in the world. It claims as its own the faith of the historic church expressed in the ancient creeds and reclaimed in the basic insights of the Protestant reformers. It, affir it affirms the responsibility of the church in each generation to make this faith its own in reality of worship, in honesty of thought and expression, and in purity of heart before God. In accordance with the teachings of our Lord and the practice prevailing among evangelical Christians, it recognizes two sacraments, baptism and Holy Communion. The United Church of Christ recognizes that God calls the whole church and every member to participate in and extend the ministry of Jesus Christ by witnessing to the gospel in church and society. The United Church of Christ seeks to undergird the ministry of its members by nurturing faith, calling forth gifts, and equipping members for Christian service. Ordination is the right whereby the United Church of Christ, through an association in cooperation with the person and a local church of the United Church of Christ, recognizes and authorizes that member whom God has called to ordain ministry. 
and sets that person apart by prayer and the laying on of hands. By this right, ordained ministerial standing is conferred and authorization given to perform the duties and the exercise prerogatives of ordained ministry of the United Church of Christ. Hear these words from the prophet Isaiah. I heard the voice of the Holy One saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am, send me. How wonderful it is to see a messenger coming across the mountains bringing good news, the news of peace. The messenger announces victory and says to Zion, Your God reigns. The Spirit of God is upon me because the Holy One has anointed me to bring good news to the poor, heal the brokenhearted, proclaim liberty to the captives, and freedom to those who are bound. Hear these words from the Apostle Paul. How are people to call upon one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? So faith comes from what is heard, and what is heard comes by the preaching of Christ. Hear these words from Jesus Christ to the first disciples. Follow me, and I will make you fishers of humanity. Hear also these words of Jesus. You know that the rulers of the Gentiles dominate them, and their great leaders exercise authority over them. It shall not be so among you, but whoever would be great among you must be your servant, and whoever would be first among you must be your slave. Christina, before God and this congregation, we ask you, are you persuaded that God has called you to be an ordained minister of the Church of Jesus Christ? And are you ready, with the help of God, to enter this ministry and to serve faithfully in it? I am. Do you, with the Church throughout the world, hear the Word of God in the scriptures of the Older and Newer Testaments? And do you accept the Word of God as a rule of Christian faith and practice. I do. Do you promise to be diligent in your private prayers and in reading the scriptures, as well as in the public duties of your office? I do, relying on God's grace. Will you be zealous <laughs> in maintaining both the truth of the gospel and the peace of the church, speaking the truth in love? I will, relying on God's grace. And will you be faithful in preaching and teaching the gospel, in administering the sacraments and rites of the church, and in exercising pastoral care and leadership? I will, relying on God's grace. And will you honor all confidences shared with you, telling only those who need to know what they need to know and when they need to know it? I will, relying on God's grace. And will you regard all people with equal love and concern and undertake to minister impartially to the needs of all? I will, relying on God's grace. And do you accept the faith and order of the United Church of Christ? And will you, as an ordained minister in this communion, ecumenically reach out toward all who are in Christ and show Christian love to people of other faiths and people of no faith? I do, and I will relying on God's grace. I now invite all authorized ministers in the Southwest Association and all of those who are members and friends of congregations in the Southwest Association to please rise in body or spirit. People of God, you have heard these promises Christina has made. What is your will? By the grace of God, she is called. Let us ordain her. Come, Holy Spirit. Will you support Christina in the ministry of Christ? We will. The laying on of hands is the symbolic act whereby the church in every age recognizes God's call to ministry in the lives of faithful women and men 
and ask the Holy Spirit to confer on them gifts for ordained ministry. As Christina takes a seat in this chair, which will actually turn around, I invite um, everyone, because everyone here has had uh, a hand in helping Christina get to this place, and this blessing that we do is with and through and on behalf of all of us. I invite everyone to come and lay a hand on Christina, or if you can't quite reach a, a Christina, to lay a hand on the person in front of you as we, um, as we confer this laying on of hands. Please come forward. Let us pray. Eternal God, in wisdom you govern all things, and from the beginning you have chosen faithful people to serve you in ministry, calling some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip all your people for the work of ministry and for the building up of the body of Christ. Now bless and sanctify by your Holy Spirit, your servant Christina, whom we in your name and in obedience to your will, by prayer and with the laying on of hands, ordain to the ministry of the church, committing to her the authority to preach your word, administer the sacraments, and exercise the responsibilities of pastor and teacher. Bestow on Christina the power of the Holy Spirit confirming what we do. Let the same mind be in her that was also in Christ Jesus. Enable her to nourish your people in the faith of the gospel. Fill her speech with truth, her life with holiness. Increase the faith of Christina in you. Strengthen her in the day of trouble. Prosper her words and works that your name may be glorified and your truth exalted through Jesus Christ our Sovereign and Savior. Amen. Amen. This is the best part of my job. (laughs) Christina, in the name of Jesus Christ, the head of the church, and by the authority of the Southwest Association of the Wisconsin Conference of the United Church of Christ, I declare you, we declare you, to be ordained to the ministry of Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. You can clap. Okay, don't go anywhere, because it's presents. So the cool thing is the first thing that happens when you get ordained is you get presents. So those of you who will be um, giving gifts, I invite you to come forward as I present these first ones from the conference. So the very first thing is, um, on behalf of the conference, it's our tradition to gift the newly ordained with a Bible, and it's um, embossed with Reverend Christina (laughs) Shanewetter. This is for you. A copy of the UCC Ordained Minister's Code. 
It's actually, it's actually pretty inspiring. For those of you who are ministers, if you haven't pulled it out in a while, I encourage you to do that. It's actually pretty moving to read. And then this beautiful certificate that is signed by our very newly installed general minister and president, Karen George Thompson, and Franz Riegert, and Elizabeth Dilley, and myself, and to um, remind you of this day. And this is a pocket version you can put in your wallet. <laughs> Congratulations. I think First Congregational Church is next, of um, here. <laughs> Christina, it was a privilege to work with you over these years, and we're so delighted with this outcome. Thank you. Christina, I'd like to offer you this stole as a gift from the First Congregational Church. As you know, Janet Pugh made the stole, but she was unable to be here today. But I understand she put in all the elements that you discussed, and in particular, uh, element of the tower of this church on the back of the stole, which recognizes the fact that we have her back. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope you're able to wear this when you honor the church's celebrations. Thank you. I would love to stole you. I never got to do that before. <laughs> Good afternoon. I'm Reverend Todd Hackman, now known as the Other Pastor at St. John's United Church of Christ. <laughs> we and everyone here knows that there are no, no dust settles around Christina. She's very proactive in everything that she does. So when we had the idea of a gift as a robe, it was discovered she had already ordered this robe. <laughs> it arrived Friday. <laughs> St. John's United Church of Christ uh, would like to um, compensate you for your robe that you have already purchased for yourself <laughs> as our gift to you. And also, one of the things we heard in the task of ministry is um, the, the offering of sacraments. And so we have a home communion set for you, um, engraved and stamped with today's date and your name. Congratulations. This is Jesse. I uh, was a student at DeForest High School in the New Reflections that Shane taught at. Sorry. I was a student at DeForest High School in the New Reflections program that Shane taught at. If it wasn't for her and the other teacher there, I probably would not have graduated high school. I'm very thankful. Thank you. Are you opening it now? So I've been told there's something for my dog. <laughs> so. <laughs> and 
some other things. Do you mind if I open those later? Okay. Thank you. So, and thank you to the rest of you who are here too. So, thank you. It's not right that I should stand in front of you. Thank you. Christina, you have been so blessed by these gifts today and even more so by the gifts of all who gather together to support you who have blessed you with gifts on your journey as you have explored your own gifts. And I know that you will continue to return those gifts to all who are gathered here in person and online and in spirit. And we are grateful for that. Let us pray. Loving and leading God, you are the summons that stirs hearts, the unexpected call that prompts us to listen, the wisdom that empowers, and the peace that passes all of our understanding. You are the source of courage and hope that gives our life's purpose. You are the founder of all joy, and to you we lift up our praise. Today we gather as your church to give thanks for Christina and to affirm the promises she has made for ordained ministry in your name. Her journey to this day has been no small endeavor, requiring discernment and discipline, risk-taking, prayer, and perseverance, all as she has balanced so many responsibilities as teacher and learner, friend and pastoral leader. She has listened for your still small voice as she has walked along shorelines and woodlands, as she has journeyed through classrooms and congregations, through places of human heartache and need, and as she has wrestled with your purpose for her life. You, O oh God, have long seen in Christina the unique gifts she possesses for pastoral ministries, her faithful spirit, her passion for youth, her creative imagination, her compassionate heart, and her unwavering commitment to justice for all people and the natural world. And so you have called her to this day, this time, and this place, to follow you into the uncharted waters as a pastoral leader. And she has answered with trust and faithfulness. We thank you, O oh God, for Christina's yes to your call upon her life. And we thank you for all of the people who have supported, encouraged, and guided Christina with such love and confidence in her spiritual gifts family and friends, colleagues and congregations, students and teachers, and the whisper of the Holy Spirit that has come to Christina through the lakeshore woods and waters that she loves so much. And now inspire Christina, the congregation and the colleagues of St. John's with the glad privilege of partnering together in ministry as they teach and care for one another and witness to your love in the wider world. Bless Christina, we pray, with your loving care and tender guidance. May each day bring her the delight of serving you and the joy of companionship with all of us who desire to journey with her. Empower her with your strength and perseverance in days that are weary and challenging. Give her the rest that comes in your abiding love and abundant grace. Make her unafraid to tend to the growing edges of her spiritual life as she nurtures and is nurtured by others. And may we, the church, be ever a source of love and affirmation for Christina in all of the days to come. With grateful hearts, 
We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. A blessing for clergy, a blessing for Christina. May the blessings released through your hands cause windows to open in darkened minds. May the sufferings of your calling brings be put, be but winter before the spring. May the companionship of your doubt Restore what your beliefs leave out. May the secret hungers of your heart harvest from emptiness its sacred fruit. May your solitude be a voyage into the wilderness and wonder of God. May your words have the prophetic edge to enable the heart to heal itself. May the silence when your calling dwells foster your freedom in all you do and feel. May you find words full of divine wisdom and warmth to clothe the dying in the language of dawn. And may the slow light of the Eucharist be a sure shelter around your future. As it was said in the welcome today, you are welcome here at this table, no matter if you have been here before or long to be in relationship. Jesus said, come and have breakfast, an invitation so rich with God's love, forgiveness, and relational faithfulness. So come, come to this table with that same invitation. Come to recognize the lasting love on the shoreline, even when it seems like you are drowning. Come to fish for what nourishes you. Come to the fire on the beach where you will be marked by God's goodness, warmth, and care. Come and eat and be nourished and fed. And when we do, when we taste such grace, we will be asked to extend the invitation to others. Feed my sheep. On the night as Jesus gathered with his friends for dinner, he took the bread, gave thanks, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks, poured it. Gave it to his disciples and said, Drink of this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Please join me in the prayer of consecration and the prayer of Jesus. Creator God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and the fruit of the vine. Make them for us sustenance for our days, love for simple and ordinary lives, fuel for justice in this world. Whether it be a simple breakfast or a feast, 
you give us what we need. By your spirit, open us to each other. We now lift our collective voice to you, O God, as we pray the words Jesus taught us to pray. Our creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite Reverend Todd Hackman forward and the ushers. Table has been set. I'm actually going to have you. Should we switch? Let's switch. Or do right. the cross the There's going to both ways.
Please join me in prayer of thanksgiving. Holy One, we give thanks for this simple breakfast, this holy meal. We give thanks that our nets are full. God, amidst the sandy beach places and rocks of our lives, we have been fed by your abundance this afternoon. May the Holy Spirit now lead us forth into new places. Amen.
As you leave this place, be nourished and fed by God's goodness and grace. Soak in the mystery and movement of the Holy Spirit as it stirs in your life and relish in the love shared in this sacred space today. Go in peace. Amen.